In the fall, Sally and I became frog and bandit again and smoking the bandit too. The stunt pack sequel that would open to record-breaking business in August of 1980. Now, what is the sequel called? Well, right now it's called uh, Smokey and the Bandit 2, which I think it took a lot of thinking to come up with that. <laughs> Universal approached Burt back in 1977 with an offer of $2 million just to agree to make a sequel to the box office smash Smokey and the Bandit. With the line from the beer side. Uh. Burt told the studio he would do the sequel, but only when he was ready. Three years and five pictures later, Burt was ready to get back into that Trans Am. Hi, Bill Burt. Hello, you handsome thumb bitch. Hi, Junior. Hi, Carrie. Shut up, you shit. All the main cast are back. The Snowman, Jerry Reed, of course. If he doesn't get at least half of the money, he may become very violent. Sally Fields Frog. Look, Cletus, I'm a little busy right now. Big and little Enos Burdett. This bullshit has got to stop. And the great Jackie Gleason. Hey, Daddy, look at that big, ugly alligator. That reminds me, I got to call your mama tonight. Plus, this time around, they're joined by the hilarious Dom DeLuise. I was going to take a temperature, but uh, I need this. Now, before Dom landed the role, Burt considered another funny man to play the part. We have a part in Smokey 2. We're taking a pregnant elephant from Key West to the Cotton Bowl mm -hmm. before it gives birth. And locked in with the pregnant elephant, we kidnap a gynecologist just to look after the elephant. Mm -hmm. It'd be this a is what you have in mind for me. Well, it'd be a great part for you because we could shoot it all right in one little room. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, you could use that glove you had. While Carson would have been great, Dom DeLuise was probably the better choice as he steals all of his scenes, just like he did in the end. <laughs> Oven, say ah, I my nuts. Too bad he spends most of his time locked up with the elephant instead of making the cast crack up in every scene. Throughout the filming, Sally would get pissed off because we weren't doing the work. She hated that we were giggling and laughing and never saying the dialogue in the script. I give a nice examination as soon as she gets her nose from out of my crotch. With a $16 million budget, Smokey 2 was a much more expensive and more polished movie. Well, that's ridiculous. But it was missing some of the charm of the original, and truthfully, it's not a very good film. Uh. Scenes like this made me crack up laughing. Uh. But seemed lazy and written for cheap laughs, although at times the film can find some of that old magic that helped make the original an all-time classic. Excuse me, sir. Your ass is on fire. Bet you'd be glad to get back in Canada and stick in the snow. This sequel looks and feels more like a studio movie. You can sense the executives at Universal could see the money pouring in. Gentlemen, kids love that stupid bandit movie, right? We're gonna do another one. But let's throw in a cute animal this time, maybe a monkey or an elephant. And we'll crank out a bunch of these action figures and play sets for the little bastards, right? Now, the older some bitches, they love that Jackie Gleason guy, right? The Butte Buford or whatever. What, what the hell was the name of the show he was on? The Honeymooners? The Honeymooners, right, of course. So let's give them more Gleason, like three times as much Gleason, and more Bert and Sally loving. They loving, yeah. That chicks love that shit. So let's get to work, boys. Get the hell out of here. And that's how the film was made. Perhaps. After we broke up, uh, where'd you go? Pieces. Where? One of the film's many problems was that too much of it focused on Bert and Sally's real-life relationship issues. He loves me. He loves himself. He loves me. He loves himself. They spend the majority of their screen time arguing, and when they're not arguing, Sally is constantly putting him down. I've seen you with your clothes off, remember? Of course I remember. It ain't no big deal. The romantic collapse between Bandit and Frog completely destroyed one of the most enjoyable on-screen pairings since Bonnie and Clyde. 
Although every now and then you'll see a little of that old charm break through. You want to make this last run so you can be famous again and, and be the old bandit come driving in there and be everybody's hero. But for the majority of the movie, it simply looks like she didn't even want to be there. My one and only reason for being here is money, M-O-N-E-Y, so let's get started whipping your ass into shape. <laughs> she still loves me. Through it all, Sally and I had perhaps the most heated affair of our relationship. By the time the picture was finished, she seemed to be working as hard as possible hey. to hate my guts. Where are you going? New York. Why? Because you're not there. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? When Bert and Sally are on screen, the laughs are few and far between. You sure didn't waste much time dilly-dallying around with another bunch of people, did you, once we broke up? Well, you were dilly-dallying around when we were still together. Uh, hey. At this point, their relationship was falling apart. Bert thought it would be a great idea for Sally to actually write their breakup scene herself. Sally wrote it because our relationship was over, and I thought she got a lot of stuff she wants to say. Why not do it on film? And boy, did she ever. You're a famed junkie. They might as well lock you up and give you intravenous feedings of People Magazine and National Enquirer headlines. And if you're a real good boy, they'll give you an occasional Tonight Show enema. <laughs> wow. But Sally was remarkable. No, Clearly the lines she'd written were about us. I'm not having any fun right now. Neither am I. Everything she wanted to say for a long, long time. And some things she already said in private. The bandit is not as likable this time around. His ego is out of control as his failed attempt as a folk hero falls to pieces. Let me tell you something. I'm practically an American folk hero. I mean, you should ask some of my fans. To know me is to love me. You know, I just made a correction on my list. Yeah? You're in the top two assholes. Daddy, I got a pee pee. Swallow it, I'm busy. Jackie Gleason, as always, seems to be having all the fun in this one. Get out of there, you son of a bitch! Or you gonna have a penalty flag hanging out of your ass! An argument could be made that Buford T. Justice is the funniest character in this movie. Howdy. Swamp fever! Swamp fever? Dan, if I know where it is, I knew around here myself. Actually, no argument needed. Are you all right, Junior? Yeah. You would be a shit. Now, this film wouldn't be complete without a great new song by Jerry Reed, who broke the mold with his timeless classic, Eastbound and Down. Eastbound and Down, put it up and fuck it. This go around, the snowman brings the somewhat less memorable Texas Bound and Fly It. Well, if I can keep it on the ground, when I put that hammer down. But it still kicks ass. Doc, I thought I loved him too much to do that. Now, with a much bigger budget, director Hal Needham seemed to pour most of his money into elaborate and mostly forgettable stunts. Daddy, look out! Ah! Oh boy, a roller coaster! At Lakewood Park in Atlanta, Georgia, Hal was able to blow up one of the oldest standing wooden roller coasters in the country. Ready? Here we see Bert and Sally showing Hal some lines they came up with for the shoot. Damn, I just love amusement parks. You are an amusement park. With cameras strapped to the car, Bandit and Frog finish their scene and let the stunt doubles take over for the more dangerous action sequences under the coaster. Damn, I love amusement parks. You are an amusement park. Yeah. If that one's good, we'll go down and make the jump next, okay? Sections of the coaster were cut in half, and explosives lodged into over 900 holes throughout the base. Meanwhile, it was time to celebrate Bert's 44th birthday on this 11th day of February. I'll give you zits just cutting that one. <laughs> Finally, after a few more close-ups of Bert and Sally in the car, it was time to light up the coaster. Okay, ready? All right, here we go. Of this, uh, 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 this mess. Some of the scenes were shot at the Burt Reynolds Horse Ranch in Jupiter, Florida, including the training montage, the Gator Motel right behind me. Hey, how you doing? And the Everglades gas station. Hey, anybody in that crapper? <laughs> 
So I keep it rolling. Okay. This is good stuff. Yeah, I like this. Now, the best thing to come out of Smokey 2 is starting the long tradition of the end credit outtakes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this, I'm missing my wife. It's so bad. San Diego, which in German means a whale's vagina. <laughs> a popular trend that continues in films and television to this day. Are you gonna have a gag reel on this like Smokey and a Bandit? <laughs> we do get the giggles immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, come on. We were the first people. I'm, I'll just say that one. <laughs> I said, you know what, Al? The outtakes are better than this movie. That he needs to do this job for me. I forgot the line. We should release these outtakes. Forget the movie. Charlotte, you're pushing the truck to Georgia. And the nice thing about it is the character's relationship, the audience could see it was the same. <laughs> it's all shit. Let's pin the first one. <laughs> it was still funny, still silly. Do you want to him while we got him down here? <laughs> <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit 2 opened at number one at the box office, knocking The Empire Strikes Back from the top spot. At the time, Smokey 2 was the biggest opening week in film history. <laughs> An incredible achievement in 1980 for the world's number one box office champion. <laughs> the critics hated the film, and in particular, Hal Needham's directing. It's time for Siskel and Ebert Burt Reynolds' shitty film review. He had 50 squad cars running into 50 semi-trailer trucks, and it was not funny. It was just a gargantuan, dumb event. Are Cisco and Abel st still alive? Are they alive? They do late-night television. I think they're dead, but nobody's told them. <laughs> and that's the end of the Cisco and Ebert Burt Reynolds shitty film review. Another problem with this sequel was lazy writing that often just reuses lines from the first film that now fall flat in this second story. Bye -bye. There ain't no way. No way. In response to harsh reviews, Hal decided to take out a full-page ad in Variety, depicting himself sitting on a wheelbarrow full of cash. Yeah, look at that! <laughs> Do you realize we can start a bank? Despite the film's success, Burt was not happy with this sequel at all. He said, They were making it for the money, and we were whores too. We played along, and I wish we hadn't. What a putz. Watch for new movie reviews and documentary series. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so you know when new reviews arrive.